Dr. D.K. Hari and Dr. D.K. Hema Hari. They both hail from an Indian traditional family. They both have a career as management professional for years. Then they have chosen to follow the calling of life, the pursuit and seeking of knowledge through questioning. In the field of civilizational studies, they are founders of Bharat Gyan, a forerunner in Indian civilization knowledge studies. They have multiple contributions. They have given 500 hours of multimedia content, published 100 books as part of Autobiography of India, 5 documentary films, 500 short films, 500 blog articles, etc. They have gone for two awards, Shri B.R. Haran Memorial Award, Visalakshi Award. They are well recognized by Dr. A.P.J. Abdul Kalam, Mr. Amitabh Bhajan, Swami Dayanand Saraswati and others. Ladies and gentlemen, I just have two things to say. Dr. Hari didn't like me reading this. He said, in the introduction, no, just say Hari, I'll come and talk. He just moved me. Few minutes back during lunch, they were serving lunch and the person who was giving plates denied to give him the plate because he didn't have the coupon. He didn't have uh, any strong voice. He didn't even change his face. He was so soft, so humble. Leave, they're following a system. Let's go by the system. Take your time, no hurry. So we were totally moved with your humble nature, sir. We know your global speakers because of this inner value, sir. Thank you for teaching us all this. Thank you so much. We are awaiting to listen to you, sir. Leveraging traditional frameworks by Dr. D.K. Hari and Dr. Hema Hari. Over to you. Thank you all. Thank you, doctor, for such a nice introduction and that extra two points like masala you added to it. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, first of all, uh, before we start, we like we like to thank. Uh, sure, please. If you want me to take the stage, we like to thank uh, Rotarian Ramakrishnan for uh, calling and inviting us, my wife and myself, for this program. And uh, thank you, sir. There you are. Thank you. And uh, he was saying here, I said, no, no, we will come. We were supposed to be in Bombay. He said, we'll, we'll prepare on the flight. We, we'll be here for the events. Thank you. Which you did. Uh, the, the others, there, I was looking for Mr. Raja Raman Muttakrishnan. Uh, I'll tell you, when you my tenant said this up, just a little quick incident. Uh, for organizing this excellent program, getting so many people together, really appreciate you for it. The key point is, I remember him talking to me about this probably about five, six years back. That is in the BC era. That is before COVID era. We are in the AC era, no, after COVID era. <laughs> okay. He was so passionate talking about it. The one thing that did occur to me, few thoughts occurred. One thought that occurred to me was, Is it possible? Ma. Among of, many of you thought, so here are a group of people who all made it possible. So appreciate you all for it. And in whichever ways we can, we'll always be glad to be associated with this uh, group of people because we are also obviously Brahmins, obviously, so without doubt. And wherever we go, we'll, 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 we'll take the word along and, sp and spread the good word. We also can spread the good word. Okay. This is the name that uh, when Mr. Krishna asked what is the name you would like to give us, we said leveraging traditional frameworks. That's a term that my wife came up with. We look at why, because the, each of this has a meaning. It's, each of these phrases, leveraging traditional frameworks and strength has meaning. Let's look at each other as we go along. You, as we unravel the next 35, 40 minutes is what is given to us. We will unravel each component of it. Yes. See that we're going to take stock of three ideas. Vocations, very important. Let's look at that. Good business practices. The third thing is frameworks. Enabling them. That's what it will be. We'll do that. Okay? We look at each one of them. See when Balakka behind you. Balakka, yes. Okay. In order of needs, we look at it. What is it we speak about? Roti, Kapada, Makan. Very important, all three for all of us. And then you, you go on to ancillaries. Obviously, food, Annamaya, among the Pancha Kosha, which you wanted to show, uh, Annamaya Kosha, very important of the Koshas. Basic is food, so everybody needs it. Next comes Kapada. Then, 
infrastructure, not just Makan, the word of Hindi, word of Makan, but infrastructure overall and lot of that. Let's look at of all the practices in the world, which is the most important practice is food, agriculture. So here I want to make break a myth with all of us here that agriculture is not only to the agriculturist. Every human being, be it Raja or Praja, has always been involved in agriculture. Right from Prithu to Janaka, it's all there, right from Prithu to Janaka, whom all you can think of, the Raja of Odisha, uh, Gajapati or the Raja of Cambodia, Narottam Sihanuk. Look at his name, Narottam Sihanuk is the name of the Raja, what is that? It's, it's not Narottam, it's Norodom Sihanuk. That is Narottam Simma Mukha. That's Sihanuk. That's how it is. So, everybody from the greatest of the kings to the ordinary plebeians, everybody is involved in agriculture. Look at that's a key point what we want to say. So, Brahmins were also involved in agriculture at every level. Because it comes to season of sowing and harvesting, all hands to the deck. Everybody in the village in agrarian society, all over Bharatavarsha and Bharatakanda, which includes Southeast Asia, were involved in it substantially. So that was one. And so even warriors own land, people who are pundits own land, everybody own land, every tilled the land, every soil. That's why I use the word, if you can go back one side, I don't know, use the word there. Uh, look at this word I used. Everybody was a Vavasai. I use a Tamil word here, of course, similar words in Kannada, Malayalam, Telugu, Odisha, or B Bengal, Assam, and other word is what is called Samsari. Again, I've used a very Tamil word wantonly here because I'm sure all of us have equivalent words. That. What is a Samsari? A man when he marries and gets involved in tilling a land is only then Samsari. Only then he can celebrate Pongal with meaning. Because the yield comes from his land. Otherwise, it's not a samsari. And generally, the land belongs to whom? To the lady of the house, his wife. She brings it because she is the stri dana. She brings in the land. This guy doesn't have it by himself. Only the wife comes in, he gets the land. That's a, that we read about in one of the books called Breaking Limits about society. It's there for you to read. That's, a, that's one side. So, of in fact, actually, we'll appreciate it when we look at the term bu dhanam go dhanam. Fundamentally, these two dhans are given to Brahmins on so many occasions. So, what is the Brahmin going to do with the boo, dhan, boo the, that he is getting from the, as dhanam? So, we have never associated Brahmins also having land, tilling and uh, growing food. But that is the fundamental, like he just said, everybody had to have the basic activity in their lives of farming, growing their own food. And who is a farmer? He is next only to God. Okay? So, I, we want to show you a small film of a person by name M.G. Ramachandran who was two, three decades back actually a guardian of Brahmins. He didn't say that word but he did it by action. And look at what he says. It's a short one minute uh, a we object extract from a film that is old film. Look at that, after God, it's only the Vivasai. And every Brahmin is involved in it. Just a one minute clip. Soil will get that progress. Pearls from soil. What do we don't have in this land? 
Why should we go put our hands in front of the foreigners? What is it we don't have here? Everything we have here. Why should you put your begging hands with the foreigners? Work in the fields. Work hard properly in the fields. So you will grow the world over. Enough. So this is a fact that everybody, see when the, the reason I want to show this is for a simple reason. It's, there's been a wrong portray in the Brahmins means they only recite the Vedas, so Upanishads and Brahmanas and Aranyakas, that's their job ends and some Puranas, that's the job ends. No. Every Brahmana was also involved fully in agriculture. Yes, they had one, that is they were knowledge seekers, knowledge people. They were also tillers. Every family was also a tiller. Everybody was also a tiller too. Not only were they tillers, Beyond that, they did something else is what you can show. Brahmins were multi-skilled, multi-layered, multi-capable people is the point we are trying to highlight here. So, yes, they were knowledge seekers, knowledge providers, they were agriculturists, tillers, food makers, food providers. Three, they had one or more skill beyond that. Let's take, we said roti, kapda, makan. So, we have seen roti. What about kapda? Brahmins were involved in kapda. How is this possible? Of the people, when you say kapra, what is the rishi that is you associated with growing cloth? Who is a rishi father, 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 rishi of all the growers of makers of cloth? If you look at that incidentally, you want to go there, you want to show that? Yes, please, you want to go to that? Phil, we'll show you the idea of, it's called Patangi, Rishi Patangi, Maharishi Patangi. We'll show them and explain to you. So, film this is our own Bharat Gyan film. Nice song. Did any of you think that the English word pantaloon dress comes from our Brahmin Rishi Patangi? So, Brahmins are given the idea of weaving and cloth and practiced it. They made the finest of the cloths for the divinities in their temple. They made it for the community and the people at large and they had a whole group of jatis who were doing it. Isn't it nice? Look at the term, how beautifully it comes up. Now, you have agriculture, you have of course Veda's knowledge, with, what is Veda? Veda comes from the word with. With is knowledge, with, wit, English word wit, wisdom, jnan, jnana, knowledge, gospel, gnostics, jnan, 
all same root bij akshara what is in tamil it says ver chol bij akshara that's all it is nothing else so having said this so you see in the idea of how we given the idea of weaving cotton itself to the world that's something you should be proud of next after cotton you yeah, you you got roti you got kapda what's the next thing you need makan Ma for makan infrastructure what do you need metal steel zinc copper all the metal tin all the ores you need who is the guy who did it for all of us no 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 i just think you need to go back to okay you want to do wood steel fine in India around 300 BC this 3000 BC that's okay possibly a mistranscription of book an indecise version of uruku which means melting in tunnel and then the Bharatgyan film among the 500 films you have seen few of the films yes these are our own personal Bharatgyan films that's when she said 500 plus films one, one of the, right. look at this the idea of wood steel it's an anglicized word because the anglican tongue could not say uruk as you say in tamil or uk as you say in kannadam or telugu so see that's why so they turned it wood steel made it a world famous steel but it's actually our product made here be it in kudremukh in karnataka or near salem which is called uh, kodumanal or many of the place like that okay are it all over so that's so our product so it went all over from india and then the kammaris of andhra pradesh telangana belt adilabad belt they all had it so everywhere you have this and goa too for that matter because that's where all the all the uh, uh, what do you call the mine ore is all over you so you have seen now the point of in this you want to show about brigu if you don't mind yeah who is the rishi for this for all steel making the for world over any metallurgy so the idea of uh, metallurgy itself is connected with the rishi brigu and this goes with the Uh, idea of the sound itself br the idea of br is the sound of fire and the most essential ingredient besides the ore for metallurgy is fire where is metallurgy without fire so today if you see anybody from the bhargava gotra all the bhargavas who are descendants from the uh, lineage of rishi brigu then you automatically you know they are all associated it was a known fact unfortunately because of this last 200 years of the knowledge gap today we are not able to associate and that's what we are trying to highlight to you every rishi name we take actually points to some specialized industry or the other and that is what we have to get back to to bring back our pride that we are actually multi talented we have been doing so many things in fact look at it even kadgalakshanam if you see there is a, a beautiful description by varaha meera and brahat samhita where he says how to make the swords 
and uh, how to get them to that fine all those jawabe hind that we saw the fine swords from india they were actually called the damascus swords what you know them as damascus swords today they are all the swords from india Once and it is be, we have a film on the word damascus sword also separately in our uh, youtube channel watch it because we don't have time in given 35 minutes we cannot show fine art films obviously so watch the other it's there for, for free public viewing the book is also there for reading so he writes about khadga lakshanam khadga means sword how would he have done all this without actually practicing this industry so these are things that we have to come back to and remember and this is what shows us that every brahmin actually had minimum three vocations look at this point here. one knowledge keeping and practicing the knowledge safeguarding that knowledge to Uh, of farming tilling his own land for his own food for himself and his family he may not be doing it as a vocation to feed the whole civilization but he was feeding his family at least and three they were all excelling in some area of technology or the other when we say the jatis of india in the jati varna system each jati is actually the we say jati right to mean a type a type of what a type of technology a type of industry a type of skill so every jati jati are not uh, uh, just a group of people they represented in our civilization they represented industries skills that is what they actually represented and uh, that is what and therefore you have people brahmins by the name madabushi it's such an in so many people i'm sure and they're not just tamil you'll find them in across all the states uh, so far i think you've got it up to south india as we go across to north india also you may connect with many brahmins who are called madabushi what does it mean you have a mada that is the uh, you know in the village uh, the uh, the Uh, area where the brahmins used to live and they are the bhushanams so they were people who were shining exemplars for that village so mada bhushanam like say padma bhushan mada bhushan so that is they excelled in multiple areas of activity so they were looked up to as people who not only had one skill but had multi talented which was possible by brahmin that's why they had this additional surname as mada bhushi mada bhushanam look at that see each term has a so much meaning to it next point no, okay if you want to go back one point if you have time give us one or, one or two more minutes extra if possible sir uh, she showed that uh, she showed about fire you want to go back to that point since if you have a minute more no you go back to engineering technology brigu fire earlier slide i did i did go back oh. to fire i said people all of you read in your science books do you know what they say for oh, fire okay uh, all of you go to the science books if you read uh, go back the same same thing same thing there itself mm -hmm. do you know what they say fire the greatest invention of mankind was given by an unknown man that's what you read everybody reads in science books by an unknown man no we have it that it is by a known man and that known man has a name his name is other one and the people who come in his lineage are angirasa the angirasa gotra that we follow so he is the illustrious lineage of people who have given the greatest invention of mankind that is fire and we venerate that gene genealogy we venerate that gotra only we do it that is one then what do we do from fire comes wheel the second greatest invention for that we have a guy by name brigu whom we call sobri bargavas we have that then clothing you have a patang marishi patangi look at every stage we have people and who was the one who gave us the greatest farming who gave us farming who made the land the the earth as tillable who is that guy prithu so what do we call the earth itself prithvi from prithu who made the land tillable for us look at the how we have venerated each of these names and generations not just one gentleman but the whole lineage of that even to this day we venerate and look at them with awe with respect and we carrying forward their good practices so that's why what do you have in vishnu purana you have a discussion between rishi parasara and rishi maitreya about what idea of 
making food, growing food, and what do you call that? Rishi Parasara book is called Krishi Parasara. Idea of a Krishi. Rishi Parasara book is called Krishi Parasara. The idea of Krishi. Kar to do. Kar to do. Karam. Kar, karate. That's what you get that from. Thank you. Go back to the next point. So we were all multi-talented, multi-skilled, multi-capable, and we were all Bhushans. Not just Mada Bhushans, Desh Bhushans. Next point, please. Uh, now, when uh, Mr. Rajaram spoke, he spoke about networking. Do you know the greatest networking that we have had? The Kumbha Melas, the Pushkarams, the Sangamams are the greatest networking that we can ever have. Yes, we celebrate Kumbha Mela, Pushkaram to Varuna and Pushkaraya's son. Yes, you have somebody mentioned about Mantan, fight and melts back. The Mantan, Samudra Mantan, what is Mantan? Man. Tan, the churning of the mind and the body is mantan. Tan is body. Man, mantan, churning of the mind and body is what we get. And where do we have it? All over the land. We had four primaries uh, called Kumbha Mela and we had all of Pushkarams around it. And that's where the Rishi saw the Jupiter going in a 12 year cycle. So we had a 12 year cycle on earth. So in Akasha you have a 12 year cycle, on Prithvi Bhumi you have a 12 year cycle of all the mantras. What does it mean then? It's a religious festival you will all say. You need a couple of things, you need people to travel to each of this. There was no invitation. What is it? Today you have an invitation to call you to a Pushkaram or this thing. Those days how did you come? You are staying in some forest, some hillock, some here, some there. But they all arrived at the same place, same month, same day, same tithi. How is it possible? Because the invitation was in the sky. The sky invited you to that place. The sky invited you to that river. You don't need any Raja to invite you. You don't need any government to invite you. Because they didn't exist. Rajas come and go. Kums and Pushkam Sangam happened. With or without Rajas. Because the invitation was in the sky. People came for every one of them. So at three levels. At a Desh level you had Kum. At a Pradesh level you had a Pushkaram. And at a Pranth level you had a Sangamam. Because any two water bodies join Sangam. So you had a district level, you had a state level, you had a national level. Networking. Did they just come there to take Snan? Did they just come there to take a Dukki? Shahi Snan? No. There are five types of Kum, five types of Snan. Yes, please. So fundamentally, if you look, every Kum, today we only think of it as a place for bathing and taking a dip in the holy river. But the Kum has stood for five different things, which one is one of them is the Snan. And even in the Snan, there are many types of Snan, which we'll tell, tell you about. But it was also a place for Samvad. It was a place for Kosha, where you develop the treasury of wisdom and you uh, experience the elements, the Bhuta and also the Kala, 64 different Kala were uh, showcased. They, it was a place to bring these out, to exchange information, discuss and hone all these different Kala as well. So a Kum actually was a confluence. So today we have stalls here, we have people here gathered together. We are actually having a kind of a Kum. We are having more, I would say, a Pushkaram because it's a southern region. So it's a Pushkaram in a way. And and uh, kudos to all of you for uh, having this uh, lovely thing. And even the snan, see, Jala snan is just one of them. Prana snan, Mantra snan, Nada snan, Dhyana snan. So, so many different kinds of snans at every uh, We are not writing Kishkaram. this. This is written by Bharat Ratna P. V. Kane in his book Dharma Sastra, the five types of snan. So, it's not we are not coming. It's, it's, it's come up by him in in 1950. So, we are showing how the back end data of everything we say. Nothing we say is off our hat. We don't have a hat. Nothing is off a head. Okay, going. So the point is, so that is how you had the idea of networking. For this networking, suppose you have to go to a particular kum, say in Tirunal Valley or uh, the one happening near Mysuru, what is this called? Uh, uh, Narasapur. Narasingapur. T. Narasapur. Tirumukudal. So you have the, so everywhere you have. But what do you need for it? What do you need for it? In date is fine, that's given by the stars, not by you and me. You need river, that's given by geography, that's given by topography. You need infrastructure. Every 10 kilometers, you need people to give you rest, feed you, and send you to the next place. What did you need for that? That is what we had. We had infrastructure across Bharatam. 
infrastructure was well set for millennia, not by kings but by people. Look at this. We had Dharma Shala everywhere. India was a prosperous country. We had agriculture everywhere. So what did we have? Plenty of food. Sharing of food. You shared it before with not only the Rishi, you shared it with the Raja, Tapasvi, Grihastha, everybody shared it. That's why you had Chatram, Chavadi, Dharma Shala, not poor feeding places. It was not matas, but it was in every nagara to feed everybody for travelers, rest, contact. Everything was free of cost. Compare this with the idea of a British idea of an inn, I-N-N, -N, inn. Inns where you had to pay money. All your Dharma Shalas were free. To extend what, and we'll take about two examples we'll take. The closest to here is Tirupurur, that is halfway from here to Mahapalipuram, 25 kilometers from here. Look at this one town Tirupurur, between halfway between Chennai and Mahapalipuram. Do you know how many Chatrams were in that one to small town? 64 Chatrams as of 1722. Look at this beauty of each Chatram, the designs, the patterns, the royal palaces, each Chatram. Look I want you all to pay attention to the names of the Chatram. We'll ask you a question at the uh, end of these couple of slides <laughs> to wake you up, of course. That's okay. But Sandror Chatram, Sandror is learned people, Sandror, people of learning. Hmm? Look at this on this Mada Street. So every chatram, so you could go there, have all the food you want, stay for one, two, three, four days, have all the Ayurvedic medicines, get fresh clothes, do whatever uh, religious festival that was in that period, do those festivals and then move on to the next town. And look at this, Mysuru, I'm, I'm sure quite a few people from Mysuru, look at this. When the Raja of Mysuru gave up the kingdom, that was the amount of money he was spending for the chatrams. At British took look at drop straight away to one fifth in one year, then closed, closed. So the, the profusion that we are spending for infrastructure building for people to network was humongous for land to be prosperous. That's why the land was prosperous. That was the, and look at this Tanja. We'll take one more example. We showed the Mysore. We'll take Tanja our example. So in 1801, when the British took over uh, Tanjavur uh, from Sarfoji Maharaj, he writes to the British uh, He's resident a officer. Raja. He's a defeated Raja. See what he writes to the British. So he writes to this person, from my first ancestor grants to Chatrams on road to Ramisaram, that is Rameshwaram, 40,000 pass, repass every year from Banaras, Ud, Delhi, Aurangabad, Arungabad, Pune, travelers to feed them medicines three times a day. These Chatrams, not recent foundation, charities by my ancestors. So he is saying, my land is Tanjavur. People are not coming to my land. They are going to Rameshwaram. And where are they coming from? So many other places, Delhi, Aurangabad, Banaras, Pune and so on. They are just passing through my land. But my ancestors have set up these chatrams where we give them medicine, we give them food, we give them a place to stay. And he writes, I have perfect confidence that this custom of my ancestors will not be deviated from and that I shall not suffer, for, suffer the disgrace of seeing it abolished in my reign. What can I write more? So he is begging, please don't stop it, do whatever else you want but don't stop this. I don't want the disgrace that during my reign, this particular habit which has been going on for millennia in this land of Bharat has come to a halt. And look at how well they were all planned. So in Tanjavur, we saw how many in uh, Tirupurur? 64, good, you are all awake. How many in Tanjavur? 18 at least. And here, look at these, how they had designed and planned it. They were all at a distance that a person can walk in one day. So every day people could walk, take rest. So they would start from Tanjavur, go to the Ortanadu Chatram, then Muktambal Chatram. And they were all spaced at a walking distance. 10 kilometers. So, this was the kind, and this is just an example that we are able to see in Tanjavur or Tirupurur. But people from Delhi, they have come, meaning all the way through, they would have had this kind of infrastructure. So, now I just want to uh, come to the question. When you saw Tirupurur, what did you see common in the names of the Chatrams? Communities. Communities. So, for networking, look at it, what our ancestors had recognized and done. They had set up this 
framework of having the conferences which are the kums the pushkarams and the sangamams they had established yatra as a tradition as a practice so like you have you know every year we are going to have vidyut so it is going to be an annual festival right and of course today we have the hotels and all that but more importantly they had established community wise chatram so they had recognized that community plays an important role people tend to congregate from a community perspective because that gives them a feeling of comfort today all of us were so happy to eat because we could eat with a sense of security that the food is vegetarian we are all vegetarians and you walk into a five star you never expect to get fully vegetarian food but today we all ate without you know asking veg or non veg looking for red or green dot because we all knew took it for granted that it is going to be vegetarian so that community addressing the community needs is very important and that is something that you are doing now with this uh, bbb that's very important so, so what she said so if you are doing a community thing a, a patangi group of people will stay in a chatram where patangis are discussing a bargava group of people will discuss where bargavas are discussed so you will know the latest best practices of steel you know the latest best practices of good practices of cotton growing thread weaving dyeing yarning all that cut all that you will know so trade was kept at the top business practices were kept at the top and what was practiced in kashmir what was practiced in kanyakumari there was the exchange of ideas constant churn of ideas so you had the best products being made and best products being sold that was the net you said the word networking in this year networking in practice so you had guild based infrastructure constant churn of business ideas and good business practice these are not not modern jargons mind you don't think you learned them in harvard business school these are practiced in muktambal uh, chatram and yogambal chatram and mysuru and unti kappal and uh, uh, vijayawada and visak all these are practiced on a daily basis so all these terms were were in practice usage so That's that gives us the thing it's community and also when you look at the jati that gives you an idea that it is important to bring that focus so uh, 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 we were uh, listening to about the comfort zone kind of businesses versus people who are willing to go beyond comfort zones so it is good that we start focusing and saying these are the kind of industries this is within this community start giving them that opportunity to share and net work from that perspective so you want to show this yatra second or more i don't know how much time we have the other advantage that uh, we wanted to show you and uh, no. i mean remind you of fundamentally yeah we we'll want to because the yeah so we are leveraging strengths our individual strengths so what has been one of the key strengths of the brahmin community this has been to straddle to the ability to straddle the subtle and the gross and one of the uh, exemplars for this is maharishi bharadwaja i'll just show you this is a small extract from our book if you look at it maharishi bharadwaja he is uh, the rishi to whom you trace everything in sciences most, almost all branches of sciences you trace it to maharishi bharadwaj if you take medicine it will say oh atreya he goes to bharadwaja if you take anatomy surgery danvantri it will go to bharadwaja if you take about bovine all various ayurveda you talk about astronomy you talk about uh, optics engineering everybody will go back to maharishi bharadwaja including vimana which was from near bangalore <coughs> anekal subhaya sachi that also vimana goes back to bharadwaja yantra saraswas yantra Uh, sarvasva it goes back to bharadwaja everything goes back to bharadwaja why does it go back to bharadwaja yeah. what does it mean bharadwaja mean instantly her father belongs to the bharadwaja gotram so she is a right person to speak about it <laughs> i'll step up i don't know if i have that capacity because what i'm going to say is something that is just really out of the world because the name very word bharadwaja bhara means to be able to bear and straddle so dwaja too i mean there are lot of stories in the purana about his birth that is one side but bharadwaja one who is so in the context of knowledge what does it mean just because you know whatever the purana story says how do you understand 
understand Bharadwaja. Some and everything, if you trace it to this particular Rishi, what does it mean? See, knowledge we all know that it is something that is very abstract. And you have to, whatever form of written or anything is just a limited form of expressing that knowledge. Now, this is a person who, and all our rishis, they saw knowledge. That's why they are seers. Drishta. Drishta. They could see the knowledge in nature. But seeing that in nature, not all of us can do. Not everybody can do. So, they are people who, on one side you can see, all right. But the other side, once you exit that state, you should be able to communicate that to people who are in this state of the gross world. So these are people who have been able to transcend and bring that knowledge to a level that everybody could relate to and bring it to a gross physical level of being able to be communicated as knowledge sessions to people as a training as uh, uh, you know your uh, shastras and various other texts One through which people could be educated and the knowledge can spread. One second. See that what she's saying is I'll just briefly two things. So, it was the Bharadwajas who could transcend between the subtle and gross, share knowledge from the subtle to the level at gross. That is so they could transcend two realms. One other field, I'll tell you example, simple example, because this may be slightly difficult to say in one and a half minutes. I'll take one more. Historians, I always say in some history meetings, historians can transcend time. They can today talk about 2020 CE, they can suddenly talk about 1750 CE, they can suddenly speak about 3000 BCE, 2000 BCE, 1000 BCE. They can transcend time linearly and talk about different time events, time markers. Whereas a Bharadwaja is a skill to transcend from subtle to gross and gross to subtle. Look at, and that's because you had mantra also with you and you had tantra with you. So you could transcend these two and for this transcending that you could do but some people can do it and the Bharadwajas or the Brahmanas were gifted at it so they could take it from there from the gross connect it to the subtle sukshma to stula stula to sukshma sukshma to stula they could transcend physics does not transcend today from gross to subtle physics only in the realm of gross whereas we could transcend the two and that is why you have the trikona jnana of mantra Yantra, Tantra, please go ahead. So, we are people who have uh, innately by uh, so many generations have had the uh, tendency to be able to touch the subtle a little more with just a little uh, maybe we are at an advantage I would say in that sense so we should try to leverage that and the gross and uh, this is something that which we as a community can definitely do and this is an area that we should also be focusing on as a business uh, when we are looking at it Let's from a uh, business perspective yeah we'll just show one or two films and, and end the presentation person We'll just show you a film on this particular subject of Yantra Tantra. Again, this is one of our 500 plus films that we made. Just a two minute term. Yeah. 
So let's leave that. So you see the idea of a, a triangle, yantra, tantra, mantra. For that, you need to go between gross and such. You want to show that, that image of that? that I did, image I did. That show that. And then we'll move on to the next subject of. Uh, uh, so so uh, go one slide back. So you can see this. Uh, see this here. From subtle to gross is what we could move. That's the beauty that we have. We have the skill to do it. Because we have the mantra, yantra, tantra. So and this community has been in the center of that pyramid. And uh, the uh, we were talking about going out of comfort zone. So this is one of the areas that when you are exploring businesses, you should try to see how you can leverage this innate strength that this community has and be able to venture out of your com comfort zone and try to see what new businesses that you can uh, come you up can with. Tra transcend the two to do it. Thank you. Next point. Now, having said this, we get. I think we we are the last bit. So we just take what. So this has been a. We'll just take one example. We'll show See, this is an example which we wanted to touch upon. Another community which has leveraged the strength of its community, the strength of its network, is the Chettiar community. And it's very, very interesting. It has leveraged its strengths. It's built its traditional frameworks. And what we wanted to show you was how this community actually uh, comes. I mean, the, the word Chettiar itself, Brilliant. where it Brilliant. comes from, uh, is something that's uh, amazing. And when we showed this to the Chettiars themselves, they were astounded. They said, oh my God, we didn't know of this power of our uh, community. See, look how at the you, name. But, 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 how did the word Chettiar come about? Think for them. How did the word Chettiar, why should Chettiar be called a Chettiar? Or Shetty be called a Shetty in Karnataka? The root of the word comes from a Vedic word called Shreni. Shreni here. Shreni, that's a Vedic word. You find this in the Harappa Mohanjadara seals. Like here, you find this in the Harappa Mohanjadara seals, Sindhu Sarkis civilization seals, you find this. Shreni means guild. A guild of people doing one particular variety of trade. So that is what the word Shreni. It's a group formed out of trust. Trust, T R U S T. Where trust, trust rules and all the interactions. So Shreni is one such group and people of that Shreni and especially those who excel are Sreshta. So that is how you get the word Sreshta and which has, you know, people of different regions because of their languages and tongues. This Sreshta has become Set, Set, Shroff, Seti, Seti, Sreshti. So again here Set, Seti, Chetti, Shetti, Chetiar, Chettu, Siletar, Seti. Look at it, all these. And today, because and all of these were actually networked as well. I mean, it was never that the Chettiar from Tamil Nadu went all the way to Gulf or anywhere uh, like that. They also did. But then they were all, they used to keep handing over, handing over and it would keep traveling. That is how trade networks were built and grown. And this is one community that has leveraged it. And when we pointed this out to the Chettiars themselves, they were really so Abhi full of pride. They said, you are teaching me, telling me what is the greatness of my community. That means I have to live up to it now. Having known, what is it? Look at the key word here. It means Shreshta. That means a person who was trading in products was looked at as noble. So a trader is not a cheat. A trader is a noble man. That's why you have the word Shubhalab. That is you make love, but you make Shubhalab. That's an Indian concept. It is not this uh, unfortunate 70 year term we have had of a Nehruvian socialist concept of profit being a bad word. No, we our Indian ethos is profit is a good word. 
and it's called super lab lab you should make but should be super lab used for good purposes we took an example there let's take the example because chanakya is the theme of our logo we looked at that what does he say you get happiness by doing the right things to do the right things for the society you need wealth to generate wealth you need enterprise that's what we're doing here and to run enterprise you need regulated processes so you need processes you need enterprise you need wealth only then you can do dharma and it is uh, so sukhasya bolam dharma you have to be happy you must have you must do dharma look at that look at that term. this that's what I want to take this quote of chalika specially for this session because and you know, the word dharma itself means that which you bear while dharma is a very very uh, overarching uh, idea itself uh, very simply put dharma is what you bear dhar what you dhar what you hold and what do you hold your innate nature that is what you hold closest so your innate nature your innate character your innate trait is what is your dharma and as a brahmin whatever are your innate strengths that is what is your dharma and you have been li uh, living this dharmic way of life and be limitedly should not equate business to just trade business is not just trade business is an enterprise it spans across from manufacturing to its sale to its governance administration management to the research and uh, improvements that you're going to be doing constantly to uh, keep up with your manufacturing so the entire business chain it's not just only trade and uh, these are some of the ideas that we wanted to uh, leave with you all today and uh, so we at the one more crux, example we want to take this example yeah so the crux of it all is we need to understand our strengths express our strengths and uh, there is a very beautiful uh, yeah. yeah see we have a phrase in brand called pratiwadi bhayankaram some people have the initial called pb you think what is pratiwadi bhayankaram see it's, it's got an important idea in trade in business discussion so this vadam where you have discussions arguments counter arguments then you have samvadam equal discussions equal arguments that leads to vivadam counter arguments then leads to pratiwadam objecting or opposite, opposite arguments so there are some people who are expert in trade negotiations discussions not only of vedas of upanishads of brahmanas but also business that's why you have the idea pratiwadi bhayankaram so they are so skilled at it <laughs> they are so expert so you can have an idea but you have to bring out the idea in whatever field it may be it could be in veda it could be purana to be push anything so that was that how so look at the way we had molded ourselves across the genre across the gamut across the bouquet having said this let us one more thing see my name is dk hari dk hema hari the k in our initial stands for the term kandadai the the short stands for and kandadai is actually she is talking her thank you malika <laughs> thank you her she knows so about it she is a cousin and a colleague at hindu mission hospital so now the word kandadai comes from the root word gandad gandadiya sugandham gandham an all india word is incidentally some of the kandade also were also uh, ministers in the court of krishnadevaraya so it's it's a it's a pan indian term that used sugandham we take a so we come from that idea so what are we doing gandham is fragrances so we are offering fragrances to the knowledge system of this land and we always offered fragrances to the world as well we'll again play a short film for 2 minutes on gandham sugandham how we offered fragrance to whole world not just us here Tropics 
Up to Indonesia. After this, 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 after is one of the most expensive but the most essential ingredient in fine perfumes the world over. Priced for its unique sensual aroma. Agar wood is also used in Ayurveda medicines to treat many conditions and has also been used world over as an aphrodisiac. Wood used to be used mainly by the Arabs and extremely rich in the West. In recent times it has become the base for high-end brands of perfumes in the West. Other Bhakti, Dhu and Sangrani were other forms of these incense sticks. The tribes had harvested other substantially from these precious trees from Malaya to be behind a legacy for us. Typically, it is a 50-year-old mature tree that give out the best to resin in a slow process and hence the best aroma. Udvati, Udvati. So look at this. So we are proud that we, being Kandade, are able to share the fragrance of knowledge of the civilization, knowledge of this land and share to people who are interested in knowledge because we are all people seeking good knowledge. Being Brahma, we are all in knowledge. And the one key point I would like to say is, what is important is the call to action is what uh, Mr. Ajara asked, what is it? We must have dare and confidence. Con because when we have the knowledge, we will get to know. Only get to we'll put it in practice and show it all. So, what is important? Dare and confidence. One thing I asked uh, Mr. Ramakrishnan was, is there any dress code for this event? Because it's a Brahmin event. I said, why not it be Madisaru for ladies and Panchakacham for men? <laughs> that should be the dress. So that is what you show. You flaunt and show. And I want to say, there's only one lady, one mommy who's come in. You know, a whole of us, 400 people, only one person who's come in Madisaru. Please get up, mommy. See, that is, so next time when we have an event, we must all come for the event in Panchakacham. And Madisar, to say that we are proud about our culture, because we have offered so much, and we should continue to offer our strengths for this land. That is where the dare and confidence needs to come. That is the call of action. Then you don't have to overuse it, but you've got to use it where it needs to be, so we are clear about what we want, what we want to share, transcend from subtle to gross, transcend knowledge, use multi-layered, multi-talented people, to do all this. So, those who want, some people ask me, where is the content available? All our content is available in Bharat Gyan, our website, our films, our books, online. We have incidentally written only about 100 books. And still that's we are only scratching the surface of this knowledge base. So, that's all is that most of online, physical, all this available. We do a lot of courses internationally for universities. Those who want to, the join, welcome, the join us, discuss with us. We'll be willing to offer a lot of students, a lot of opportunities to take this forward. Once again, my wife and I would like to thank this August forum for having given us an audience to make a presentation here. Thank you. Namaste. Please come on stage. Please come on stage. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. D.K. Hari and Dr. Hema Hari. Thank you so much. We are indeed so proud of our uh, lineage and what our ancestors have done. <laughs> Uh, so, we would uh, 
we uh, request uh, mr bhargav sundaram to please uh, president of uh, bharati chapter to felicitate our uh, guests speaker guests oh thank you thank you so much thank you thank you thank you thank you so much sir. Thank you so much, Mr. Bhargav. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, really. Thank you all. One second. Thank you for a standing ovation. Really appreciate it. Let's take the knowledge forward. That's the whole idea, all of you. Namaste.